Despite what it looks like, what you're seeing here is not the aftermath of a volcanic eruption. This is my studio. This is where the magic happens, as they say. And everything outside of the camera that you see is a total disaster area. Every once in a while, people will get a glimpse of the rest of the room in a tangent cam or a comedy bit. And yeah, I, I get a lot of comments about it. Uh, it's bad. But pretty much at the end of every year, or the beginning of every new year, I am... I have to go through a process of completely cleaning out this whole room and organizing stuff because as you can see I tend to just like put things on any horizontal surface that I can find. So I decided to go light for February and March just kind of posting every other week and take some time to totally redo this space like not just a new studio and a backdrop but new storage, new desk, uh, really just get a handle on all this. In order to do that I had to pre-record the February and March videos. I hope to have them done by the beginning of February. It turned out to be more like the middle of the month. So now I have 32 days, just over a month, to turn this whole thing around to the point that I can record new videos on March 16th so that I have time to get them edited and out there by the beginning of April. So step one is figuring out where to start. I've got a whole wall unit coming that's going to be right here at the end of March. So this is going to be the last thing that I work on. But the first thing I'm going to work on is this corner right here. All my C-stands, um, that is uh, my nano lights, which is the tube lights. These are my 120Ds, so I've got plans for where I'm gonna put that. But basically all of this stuff has usually just been like shoved into this corner. But part of what I'm getting built over here is an actual little storage area specifically for that stuff. So what I wanna do is move this stuff out of here and these little cubbies that I've got right here, which I am horribly using, as you can see. And I'm gonna take those four cubbies and pop them up there. So I'm just gonna be one long two, two wide tower going all the way up. I'm gonna move all that over here. And then to clear out this back corner, I'm gonna take this little, I forget what they're called, clutches, clutch or whatever, the back of that, um, that table right there, and there's a table underneath that. I'm gonna be taking that whole thing and shifting it to this side. And then maybe moving everything forward just a little bit and then pointing this camera back into that corner. So that's the plan, and the place to start is over there. So that's what I'm doing today. So I've got that in the corner and it looks better than I thought it would. Uh, little secret about me, by the way, I am an absolute lifelong fan of Sade. She's uh, amazing. But this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And there's going to be room right there to put that table. Let's slide that over there. So the next thing I need to do is organize all of this. I've got this little label maker. I have not opened it yet, but it syncs up with your phone and creates little labels so that I can label each one of these cubbies so I can organize it better. Um, so that's the next thing. All right, so uh, kind of day two, um, I uh, cleaned off this desk over here. Um, you might have seen before, it was a big old mess. And so I've got that completely cleaned off. This desk still has some cleaning off that it could use. Um, I've been basically using this upper shelf here as the place to like temporarily store all the crap that was on that. So once I move it over here, I'll rearrange it put it back where it needs to go and whatnot. So this is going to be like the, the temporary place to put things as I move things around. The goal today is to, first I've got to take this desk with all the stuff on it. This is going to be pretty harrowing. I need to take all of this, move it forward a few feet, and then slide that out and move it over there. That's the main goal today. And if I have time, I may start taking all of this and cleaning that off. Alright, 
So I got this set up over here. I think it looks pretty good. I like the way it looks next to those cubes, actually. My wife came in and saw it and was like, oh, because oh. <laughs> it's kind of like all, all my organization in that spot, which is a nice idea. I've got this sort of set up over here so I can get a general idea of what that corner is going to look like when it's all said and done. The next thing that I need to do is I need to take the stuff that I had taken off of all this that is now up in that top shelf, get it all down here. That will give me four extra cubes. And from that, it's going to be my little transfer spot for all of this stuff. Yeah, this is officially going away. It feels kind of weird. It felt really weird earlier when I shifted this forward and had to move that camera because that camera's been set up in the same spot this whole time. But uh, that's what's going to happen next. I'm going to do to do and then do to do and then I'm going to have to get that shelf out of here. So the cubes are now cleaned out, or well, at least there's no stuff in them. They need to desperately be cleaned. They are disgusting. Okay, what you're looking at here are these foam core boards that I had velcroed to the back of this uh, shelf to give that blue background cover that you've seen this whole time. But what you probably didn't know, probably nobody knew, was that on the opposite side of that blue foam core, I had glued on green poster board. And the reason I did that was because once upon a time I was going to create videos for Canker Boy. In fact, I did record a few. They're out there if you want to find them. But I wanted a different color background. Green is one of the Canker Boy colors, so there you go. In hindsight, this was a ridiculous idea because I would have had to move the shelves out and reverse the boards every time I wanted to record a video. You can see why I only did a few of them. All right, so it's about to get real. The painting is about to happen. Um, everything's been pulled away from the wall, as you can see. I need to sort of like clean it off a little bit because there's dust and stuff. Also some screws and nails that are up there, but I'm gonna peel all that off. And then um, I'm gonna paint this wall. That's, that's today's big task, so here we go. Okay, so I had to step away from this for a minute to make sure that this dried evenly because it was a little uneven and patchy earlier, but it was just drying. So I think this is looking good.
Well, that is a big blue wall. That is what we are dealing with. A big blue wall. I'm gonna confess, I'm a little bit nervous about uh, peeling the painter's tape off because when we painted our downstairs, it had a really bad habit as I was pulling the, the tape off of uh, like just pulling the paint off with it. I've got a box cutter. I'm going to have it with me as I do this so I can kind of like trim it and not hopefully do that. But uh, so that's, yeah, I got to do that. And I'm a little nervous about it, but let's give it a go. I'm starting in this bottom corner because it's going to be hidden by the bookshelf. So if it goes bad, no one will see it. So far, so good. Next thing is to take those two bookshelves, put them where they belong, and then I'm going to deal with this. You want to help me decorate? You want to help me build my office? Do you want to help me move some stuff around? Want to help me clean? You want to play? <laughs> I take that and say yes. You're a good girl. So far, so good. Not too bad. So I need to shift these monitors all the way over here. So that monitor is going to be like right on the edge of this desk. So this whole thing is going to over. I need to move that over so that I can get the right angle on that camera. These things are probably going to have to move and I'm not quite sure where they're going to go. So there's some decisions to be made, but um, I do have a new monitor coming, uh, a nice big ultra wide monitor that's going to take the place of both of those. Um, You'll see what I have in mind. So, you know, I wish her well on, you know, anything that she's going to be going into um, in, the, in, in the future. Um, in addition to that, an additional YouTube news, um, just as a heads up for you content creators, um, Creator Music has now rolled out to all YouTube partner. Uh, this is the cleanest this desk has been in a very long time. 
Now it's the cleanest this desk has been in a very long time. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm setting up the shot to face that back corner. The challenge here is to get an attractive angle without the camera sticking out into the path through the room uh, where it'll absolutely get bumped into at some point. Also, that mic stand and light are proving to be more of a problem than I thought. This is the tripod I've been using this whole time. Um, this is how crappy it is. Like, a dog actually got a hold of it, and it's like a really cheap, like, $20 tripod that um, is actually kind of embarrassing, if I'm being honest, that I've been using this tripod this whole time. I have a brand new one coming today. It's supposed to be here in the next few hours or so. So I think I'm gonna hold off on getting this set just right because clearly this is gonna take a lot more adjusting than I was thinking. So uh, I'm gonna take care of some other things until that tripod gets here and uh, I'll take care of it then. But it's a good first step, I guess. So here's something I was really excited about and I didn't really explain very well earlier. Uh, this whole time I've been using an iMac Pro with this 4K monitor. It was basically a two monitor setup, uh, three counting the teleprompter. Well, part of this new setup, I'm now realizing, I don't think I've ever mentioned on here, is that I'm upgrading to a Mac Pro, which means that I need a monitor to take place of the iMac monitor that I'm losing. So I got this idea of using an ultra wide monitor that can take the place of both of those screens and then use this monitor as a production monitor, just mount it underneath the teleprompter on the teleprompter stand and use that to control my computer, run my recording software, live streams and all that. And I bought this heavy duty articulating arm to mount it on, which I find out, unfortunately, isn't strong enough. So, fail. All right, it's day um, five, and here's where things are right now. So I've got paneling coming for that wall, wood, uh, wood textured paneling that won't get here for a few days. So there's not a whole lot that I really want to do over here until I can get that put up. So things are kind of on hold until that can be done. I did go ahead and put in these stands for the monitors, the sound monitors. I can tell you right now, I don't know if this is going to work because it's a lot bigger than I was expecting. I've got my big softbox up here. Um, I'm not perfectly happy with the way things look in the lighting setup. I can pull that up here in a minute, but there's still a lot of tweaking to do there. I've got these. These used to be my key light. They're now kind of serving as my fill light. You know, the problem with having a fill light and having this thing set up the way it is right here is that, you know, yeah, I can put a nice key light right here in the corner. It's really tight. Um, but yeah, I can't really put another light, a fill light right here because this is the only path to walk through the room. So I put the light across the room for my fill light. It's not perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the RGB strip that I have down here that's just sort of been behind uh, my desk this whole time. I'm gonna put those up behind that. All of this junk I need to either throw away or put in my filing cabinet and organize all that. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. The only reason I've ever hung on to it is because it is actually signed by Kevin Smith. I'm not even the world's biggest Kevin Smith fan, if I'm being honest. Uh, what else we got? These two drawers, this one's all like on there, so microphone, XLR cables. Uh... <clears throat> So this RGB strip, I've actually had this entire time. It's just been kind of coiled up behind <laughs> um, behind the um, 
cubbies over here. Um, it only provided some light for behind that answers with Joe stamp thing, which may or may not come back up here. But anyway, um, so now I'm using it for really the way it's intended to be used, finally, after more than a year. And I just kind of have it loosely taped up there with some masking tape just to get an idea of what it looks like to see if I have enough. I do not have enough. I want to run some down the middle here as well. And basically what we've got right there is uh, what we've got. I can't really go any further than that. So that's kind of, <laughs> it's perfect that that's all I was trying to do, but I do want to go down the middle there. So I need to order a little bit more of that, but I will go with it for now. As I started dialing in this new lighting setup, I realized that I had a problem, which was that this new key light that I was using, the Aperture 120D, did not have adjustable color temperature, which I thought it did. It set at 5500K, and I had my camera and all my other lights set much lower in the previous setup, so I had to adjust my camera and all the other lighting settings, and voila! I got this warm, nice tone, and then I proceeded to act like I was performing, because I'm a professional. Okay, so um, I was really excited about the putting up of the wall uh, panels, the wood wall panels, and I had people helping me and everything. So we got over here and we got started working on putting them up and I kind of um, forgot to turn the camera on. I was gonna record that and share it with you guys, but I kind of totally forgot about it. So uh, pretend you saw a really cool time lapse of wood panels stacking up to the ceiling, but long story short, the end result is this. That's my new wood wall corner right there, and as you can see, <laughs> so there's some pieces right here along the edge that um, are just kind of stuck on there. The rest of them are all screwed in, but just to sort of fill off that edge or fill out that edge, I just kind of stuck them on, and they're falling down. I'll be able to fix this. It's not a real problem or anything, but the really cool thing, the pièce de résistance, as they say, somewhere, is this. LEDs, yo! So, um, I have something to say about this. I know that the, the RGB thing, which I'm still getting used to them being called RGBs because they're LED lights, but RGB is the term that the kids are calling it. Anyway, I know that that's like a big zoomer thing like a gen z thing like that's how you know you're in a gen z's bedrooms because it's got leds or rgbs everywhere um i've got to say something
I kind of effing love this. Like, I kind of love this. Um, I've always said that my favorite thing about Christmas is putting up the tree because nothing lights up a room like a Christmas tree. I just love the ambience of it. Ambience. Ambience. But I love how a Christmas tree lights up a room, and there's really nothing else like it. But this... That comes close. I always have a, a light on in this room. It's just almost like a night light, it's just a little something um, to just sort of have a little light on so I can walk around or whatever. Um, I, I'm not somebody that puts the overhead lights on anymore. Anybody who does that, by the way, can we just agree that anybody who just has like their ceiling fan lights on is a psychopath? We're all agreed on that, right? Well, this light right here, this light right here has been my, my little, you know, just, on all the time light that I have right here on my desk, but I'm thinking <laughs> I might start keeping these on. Like this might be my new thing. I really like this. I guess I'm a, I'm an honorary zoomer or something, maybe. I'm young at heart. I'm young at heart, guys. New tangent cam, which is the same as the old tangent cam, but now it's like mounted to the to the desk here. Let me back up some. Mounted the desk and just kind of aiming in that same general direction. Because as I'm using this new monitor and I'm getting rid of, <laughs> just so you can see what I'm looking at, all of this right now is working off of that computer back there, that same iMac that I've been using this whole time. So basically, I have a screen that I can't really see, and I've got to jump back and forth right now between the two. It's all temporary. But I love the idea of having this monitor right here mounted on the production screen. Um, teleprompter is not plugged in right now. That's why you got the blue screen. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't really like the placement of that speaker. I got these big speaker stands. I actually took this one down over here. I'm going to get something underneath it. There's still some adjusting to do. Those speaker stands are just giant. They're well in the way and don't really care for them. So I don't know. Still working on that. All right, so uh, here's where things stand right now. We're, um, it's March 3rd. So I really have like two weeks to get all this uh, shoot worthy so that I can start recording some videos toward the middle of the month so that when April comes around, we'll be in good shape. But um, so I've got this like display thing up here. <laughs> right now it's just sitting on top of the typewriter, but I'm gonna stick it up on the wall. Um, I've got all the NASA, like promotional posters for all the planets and stuff. So here's Trappist-1, uh, Kepler-16b. So that's an option. I could rotate those out. Um, there's also the possibility I might just put a map back there, but we'll see. So something on the wall right there. I've got a frame coming for right here with a special thing on it. Um, I guess if you're watching this after the fact, it's going to be a Zoe painting. And I need to get on that if I'm going to get that up there soon enough. So, uh, so there's that. Um, this little rocket, sh the spaceship right here, the spaceship, the starship right here was actually just sent to me. Hang on, I think I've got his name. By a guy named Travis Scagliarini. 
Um, thank you, Travis. This literally showed up in my P.O. box three days ago. <laughs> and it actually comes with uh, a little... Um, it, it almost looks like cotton candy at the bottom, but it lights up so it looks like the rocket's taking off, which is really cool. Um, but I think maybe it got broken in the mail or something. It's very wobbly. It doesn't stand up straight. Um, plus, it's a little bit too much for back here, but I thought that the Starship itself would be pretty nice. Um, just some basic designing and arranging of things. I've got um, the telescope, the 30 meter telescope model, books. Um, I did sit down with a set designer. She kind of walked me through a few things. I am going to hang my play buttons up here. So there's still a little bit to do. Um, in fact, I ordered a china ball that might hang like right here, which would not only provide a backlight for me, but also light over there a bit more. Um, so there's still some stuff to do. And for some reason, all the stuff that I ordered is taking like a week to get here. So it's, it's, it's taking longer to get here than I would like. So probably toward the middle to end of next week, I think I'm going to put all the final touches on everything. Until then, um, I kind of have some catching up to do on scripts and stuff. So I might focus on that. So I thought I might give you a little look at what I'm looking at here and what this uh, setup has turned out to be. So I've got my little production monitor there, teleprompter up there, so I can very easily take my scripts here on Evernote and just pop them up there. So when I'm reading the scripts, they sit up there. Um, I got this, the, the monitor is working, the big ass widescreen monitor. I like it a lot. I may have to actually zoom out a little bit for all this. Um, so right now it's all going through this A10 Mini Pro. Here's one of the problems that I've run into is I'm trying to upgrade to 4K. This A10 Mini Pro, only 1080p, so that's a problem. Um, I've consulted with a few people and I've gotten a solution. I've ordered it, it's on the way. It's an actual like PCI card for the new computer, which is sitting right back there. Um, so there's still a lot of cable management to do, but I'm gonna wait until I get that uh, so that I can plug it all directly into the computer because why cable manage when you're about to have to undo everything anyway. So anyway, some troubleshooting still to do, but um, for the most part, it's functional. It works. All of this is going through the new computer and um, I haven't run into any massive problems like things that didn't work on this computer that worked on the old one, but um, I like it. It works. And I, I love the way this looks in the camera. Um, Still, again, some tweaking to do, but uh, it's coming along, and here's where we are. So I got the camera running through the Blackmagic Deck link, which is letting me record in 4K, which is why this shot is so close, and you can see that nice exit on my neck so clearly. That's nice. And just in time, because I took a spring break trip with my wife, and I plan to shoot right after I get back. All right. So, um, I had a set designer come and look and help me to sort of fill out the set. I've made a few changes since she came, adding this globe right here. It's not really where I want it. I want it up on the desk. I wanted it right here where this stuff is, but um, it kind of covers up Zoe a little bit too much. So for now it's there. Um, there's a few other things that are kind of temporary right now, but it's basically, this is, this is where it is. I got this little plant that I've hung up right there. Pretty happy with that. I actually met with a photographer this morning, did a little Zoom call with him, so he was looking at me on here, and he was helping me to kind of dial in the lighting a little bit. We kind of faded back this uh, fill light a little and made it a little bit cooler in the temperature, made the backlight a little bit warmer in temperature, so we got a little bit of contrast there. Actually cooled off the lights in the background a little bit. This will progress. It will um, evolve over time, but uh, for the most part, I think I've got it where I want it. It's March 16th right now. Um, I've got to start recording these to get them ready to go out in April. So I've got a couple of them that are scripted and ready to go. But with that, um, yeah, I, I, need to, I need to do this. Time to bite the bullet, record a new one. I'm a little bit nervous. I haven't recorded a video in a while and I got this whole new setup and everything. So wish me luck. We'll see what comes out. Okay, so uh, yesterday was a cluster. F I have tested this thing. Y y so you probably noticed the little video that I shared just before as I was getting ready to shoot. Um, it wasn't at the same uh, resolution 
as the rest of this. And that's because for some reason, after all the testing and all the setting up that I have done to get ready to finally shoot on this new situation here, um, for some reason, when I sat down to actually record, it just would not record in 4K. That's why I did all of this, was so that I could shoot in 4K and we could crop in. And for some reason, it just didn't want to do it. I wound up on uh, a live chat with the support. So actually, I'm going to give some, some props to the Ecamm Live support team. Um, I got on there with a guy named Glenn, who was, trying, was kind of troubleshooting with me, troubleshooting. We were trying this, trying that. Nothing would ever work. And the dude finally was like, you know what? I'm, I'm a developer on this. I could just write you a new app. And he did. Like he just, he just took the app and gave me like a beta version of it with the bug fixed. And it turns out it was a bug in the app that had to do with some weird thing that of course only happens in one out of every 87 million computers or something. I don't know. It was some little rare, rare, obscure thing that of course my computer had. And, uh, but no, he wrote me a new script. Uh, he sent it to me. I, uh, and it worked. It worked. So, um, I started trying to record at 11 o'clock and it was about six o'clock by the time this happened. And again, thankfully to, uh, to Glenn over there at, uh, at Ecamm Live for fixing that. By the way, I just want to make a note of this to anybody who is, you know, heard what I just said about Ecamm Live creating a new app just for me. And it's like, oh yeah, you're a big YouTuber. No, I have no relationship with these guys and I never said anything about my channel or what I do. Um, as far as I know, the guy has absolutely no clue who I am. So it, was, it wasn't some like special treatment or anything. I wanted to make that clear because I'm, I'm just super impressed that that actually happened. It took a while to finally get to that solution, but he, he came up with a solution and he fixed my problem. And I just want to make sure they get the credit they deserve for that. It wasn't some kind of special treatment. Uh, it, was, it was just a cool thing that happened and props to them for that. So I wanted to make that clear. But... <laughs> As if that wasn't bad enough, I finally got it working. I was finally ready. I'd been dealing with this all day long. And then a storm blew in, which normally wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, I was a little wary about it because I am using a new Zoom or a boom mic for this. And I was afraid that shooting it um, um, on this would pick up more noise. I'm like, I'm, I'm very like, I'm kind of testing the sound right now, which is why for this first episode, I'm going to actually go ahead and wear a lav mic to this zoom recorder. Um, just as redundancy, just for a backup, just in case for whatever reason we run into a problem here. But, um, but anyway, no, I was worried that if there was a storm, there was rain, thunder, that it would pick up on that. And then we actually got a tornado warning. There was actually a tornadic cloud <laughs> that was spinning up over downtown and heading into East Dallas, which is exactly where I am. We had to clear out the space under our stairs and get ready just in case the whole thing. And uh, luckily, I'm still here. Luckily, uh, it didn't actually become a tornado. But it was a scary minute there. But like by the time that passed... And once the tornado warning went away, it was still storming and I still had the same sound issues for a good, you know, few hours after that. So at that point, it's like, it's like eight o'clock, 8.30 almost. And um, yeah. So yeah, yesterday was a complete disaster. Nothing got recorded. So here I am today on Friday and I'm recording in 4K. I've got this set up. Let's do this. That's a lot of fun. Lots of cool stuff on the way. New show formats. Uh, this is kind of a new era for the channel. Not to make too big a deal about it, like I said before, but it's a whole new era. That's next. So today is Saturday, um, on Tuesday, so I've got tomorrow, I've got two days basically, um, the new wall unit is coming in. Big thing, really excited about that. Uh, my uh, goal this weekend is to 
clear off that wall and all of this stuff. I'm probably gonna have to put that desk out on the curb or something. And um, yeah, make room for that stuff to come in on Tuesday. And then after that, I'll kind of finally be able to organize everything. And that's when I will approach something like being done. So as I've been uh, doing all this stuff to the room, I've been just kind of like throwing things into this old cubby spot here. Um, what is gonna have to happen now is I need to sort of consolidate all of this stuff into as few spaces as possible so that I can take all of this junk and fill it right there. So that's the thing right now, I gotta consolidate this and start moving this stuff over here. A lot of that's just gonna get thrown away and uh, that's the plan for today. So my plan was to take this desk and put it outside or give it away to somebody in the neighborhood. Um, we don't really have a use for it or anything. I actually went on our little Facebook, uh, neighborhood Facebook page and put it on there and was like, does anybody want this? Didn't really get any biters. And then um, I realized as I was trying to move it out of the room, I was wrong. I think I said earlier in the, in the thing that uh, this was my wife's uh, desk that she's had since college or something like that. That is not true. I was reminded as I tried to move the desk out of this room that we built the desk in this room when we first moved in, which we've been in this house for about 14, 15 years. So, uh, but yeah, so I couldn't move it out of the room. <laughs> like I, I realized I couldn't get it down the stairs. So, so this is what it looks like now. It's, it's in a few pieces and um, yeah, I'm gonna have to just put that out on the curb or something. Thankfully we don't have an HOA, but we do have neighbors that can be a little nosy and like report you for a code violation if you put your stuff out too early. So I'm gonna have to just like put this on the side of the house or something, <laughs> which is not what I wanted to do, but Anyway, the point is, today's the big day, and I've got to get this out of here. I'm about to move it outside, and uh, if I can, if they'll let me, I'm going to record a little time lapse of, uh, of them building this wall unit. All right, so here's the final result. Um, I've got my computer in there, which may or may not stay. I was kind of just put it there just to see if it didn't take up too much space, and it really doesn't. I mean, I still got this whole thing right here. I really like the idea of having a second workspa workstation because this is 
Just, well, God, it's always a mess. I know I'm gonna fail at this, but I would like the idea that I could actually keep this clean and have it be a horizontal surface that's not covered with stuff all the time that I could actually use in some way to do art, drawings, sketches for storyboards, that kind of thing. I'm gonna be putting the printer right there. That's kind of what the whole thing is about and other stuff down there. But you got all this storage space up here. Look at all this storage. So much, so much storage. I could probably put stuff up on top too. Um, there's two of these here. And then this is where it got me really excited. I got this whole cabinet here to hold my gear and all my stands and stuff. There's only one in there right now, but I just kind of put it in to make sure it fit, which it did. Extra space up there. I am happy to get organized. And you got five drawers here. They're a lot more shallow than I thought they would be. They're like very, they're just like a couple of inches deep, every single one of them. I'm not too thrilled about that. I would probably rather have had only four drawers with extra space in there, but um, I now have two different sets of drawers. I've got a set of drawers over there and a set of drawers over there. Also, I'm not thrilled about how close it is to the door right here when you first walk in the room. It does kind of stick out a little bit, but I haven't even started putting things into this yet, but I've got all that junk over there I need to sort through. A lot of it's gonna get thrown away. It's gonna wind up in there, and then I'm gonna organize all of this. One way or another, <laughs> I'm gonna get all this organized. Actually, I'm excited just that there's a pathway through this room. It's been about six weeks since you could just walk through this room without like stepping on stuff and stuff being everywhere, so that's nice. The only things left to do on the set itself is I am gonna mount this to the ceiling. I've got a little plan um, using basically a curtain rod and just tie it in there. Um, so I can get that thing, that stand out of the way. And I'm gonna do the same over here. Right now I've got a giant stand that's kind of in between these two desks and this just bird nest of cable management that needs to happen down here. But um, before I can really do that, I wanna get rid of this stand so that I have all this extra room. So anyway, gonna mount that to the ceiling, same kind of idea. I'm gonna have a uh, basically a curtain rod going across there. So um, I'm waiting for a part to come in to connect to the curtain rod. Uh, and it should be here any minute now, but um, once I get that, get those mounted, get those stands out of the way, and uh, deal with all that. So here's where things kind of stand as I'm wrapping up this video. Um, the studio is pretty much where it needs to be in terms of like the lighting and the setup and everything. I did get this light mounted to the ceiling, as you can see there, with a different articulating arm. Um, it's working pretty well. And it cleared off a lot of space underneath when I got rid of that stand. Still a lot of organizing to do there with the cables and stuff. I've got the china ball light hanging from that curtain rod. It's not perfect, it's a little janky, but it works. Here's what I'm looking at at my desk, it's all set up. Hey, look at that, Sketch Madness, you should go check that out. I think I gave up on this, the monitor stand here. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it. I found a way to clamp the aperture control to it so it's out of the way and not on the desk anymore. And there's the A10 Mini Pro, which is barely getting used. That's probably still gonna go away at some point. I still need to organize those cables a little better. I got rid of the microphone clamp that's on the side of the desk and I just used this standing thing. We'll see how long that lasts. The way the stuff on the shelves is organized from left to right, it's kind of like old stuff to new stuff, retro past stuff, history stuff to future stuff, and of course, Hail Zoe. Plenty to organize over here. Did find one little problem with this setup with the printer, which is that there's no hole there to put the cord through to plug it in. So right now to plug in the printer, I would have to like go across that bathroom door, which is not ideal, but I'm gonna have them put in a little pass-through hole later. Overall, I'm really happy with this. I've got this light over here. It's a little light pad for sketching because I can't draw very well, but it also serves as a light for the, for the desk setup there. 
And this is kind of ending where we started. I started in this corner organizing and cleaning stuff off and now it's the area that's the biggest wreck. I do want to set up a, a charging station and battery organizer right here and still plenty of cable management to do. And I borrowed this from Marquez, a pretty simple solution for setting up headphones so that they're out of the way. I'm also thinking about getting an air purifier or a, an air filter for this room to clean all the dust out of it. This dust collects so quickly, it's already coating stuff and everything's still brand new in here. Okay, a couple of final thoughts and I'll wrap up this video. I know this uh, went pretty long. This isn't completely done. I'll say this is like 85% done. But uh, it's good enough for this video. It's good enough to show you what I've done here. And uh, if you've watched this whole time, I appreciate it. I hope this was at least entertaining, um, watching me fumble around and try to be a handyman. Uh, maybe there's even some stuff that you might have picked up on that you could use yourself. Maybe there's some value to this. I don't know. Uh, but one more time, I do want to thank everybody for, uh, for your patience over the last couple of months posting so lightly on the channel. In case you're wondering, um, the channel did take a bit of a hit with the views. Um, I think I lost about 30% of views over the last month. Not terrible. I Honestly, it could have been a lot worse. From this point forward, I'm going to be you know organizing, straightening up. I still haven't even used this, this space over here in... Uh, in the new wall unit so uh and there's lots that i need to do in that closet over there anyway do you want a whole video of me organizing that could be fun it's not fun but if you want a follow-up video to kind of show where things go from here if you're that invested <laughs> I'll, I'll do that at some point in the future but anyway i i hope you guys like the new look i'm very happy with it um kind of patting myself on the back a little bit because i'm not really a designer or anything but i think i did something that looks pretty good i'm pretty happy with it i don't know if it's going to translate to more or better views on the channel or anything like that but i'll tell you what it, it it is definitely um giving me a little bit of a creative spark it's it's definitely stirred up some things having to kind of adjust to a new environment kind of getting out of your complacency getting out of your comfortable space I'm, I'm a little bit more uncomfortable in this and that kind of breeds creativity so hopefully you'll see some really cool stuff come out of it but anyway i'll wrap this up for now thank you guys for sticking through this and watching it thanks for everything and uh yeah let me know if you want to see uh more about how this comes together in the future maybe i can do another one a follow-up anyway thanks again love you guys peace